Hello everyone, uh, this is going to be a video about how to use my Terrain plugin in Godot 3.0. Uh, so it's going to change in the future, but I, I think a lot of people are a bit confused about uh, how to use the plugin currently, and I agree with them. A few things are not straightforward, uh, and, I, uh, and I plan to change them in uh, 3.1, hopefully. So uh, let's go to create a terrain. So first, first of all, uh, you need to have uh, the plugin installed. Uh, currently, I have it here. Uh, I have a few others, but you don't really need them uh, necessarily. Just have this one. Eventually, this one if but we will see why um, so uh, the terrain uh, plugin defines a new node called h terrain h4 i height map so here we go first confusing thing is that there is no empty terrain by default so uh, uh, one thing to do is to uh, create the data because the terrain needs data to work um, and that data needs to be saved somewhere and you will see how it looks like. So um, first of all, create the data in this uh, inspector uh, and it's called hterrain data. It's a custom resource type. Uh, and uh, by default, you don't need to change anything. You just need it to be saved as a file. So. Let's call it test. And then go back to the node, click on it, and click on data. You will notice that we cannot also create the resource here. So we could not even have done otherwise anyway. <laughs> so uh, load uh, test.trs, the one we just saved. And Voila, we have a default terrain. So it looks like, uh, well, we don't see much currently because uh, there is no light at all. So let's add one. So directional lights. Here we go. We have the white stuff. Uh, I will add some uh, configuration to the lights so that it looks a little bit better. Uh, like some shadows. Light, shadow enabled. And I will increase my uh, distance of view so that we can see the whole terrain. So uh, when the terrain is like that, uh, you can already modify it like that. Uh, the default tool should be the height modification tool. Um, so you can you have a brush for most of the actions in the terrain which is at the bottom left you have uh, the size and opacity so the size you can increase like that and uh, dragging the slider and opacity uh well is the th strength of the brush so if i make it very slow it's gonna be very slow or or even not even increase anything so I'll just leave it to the maximum at the moment. And you can raise. Uh, if you click at the tools at the top, you can change. You can do lower. It's, it's typical tools you find in any height map based terrain editor. So you can do that stuff. Uh, you can also smooth, so uh, if you want to have uh, less harsh uh, shapes, you can even even this out a little bit. Maybe it's not uh, uh, it's not very obvious. Yeah, here we go. So, uh, and the last one is uh, uh, is basically resetting the height. To a given level so if I, I can increase it here if I want a level of 50 uh, boom it's pretty strong but sometimes you might need it um, so this is for creating a terrain from scratch um, uh, something to keep in mind uh, 
when you want to save the terrain, uh, it's not saved when you save the scene currently. Uh, again, it's something I want to change in Godot 3.1. I made a PR for a feature I need for that. Uh, so if you save the scene, you can save it. Let's name it YOLO. YOLO. It won't save the terrain. If you want it to save, you have to go to the terrain menu at the top and click save, which will save all the stuff the terrain needs. If you go to, uh, if you then go to um, uh, the, the folder where you saved test the terrain data, you will see that it, the plugin also has created a folder next to it, which has the same name dot H terrain data, and this is all the data the terrain system needs. So we have the normal map automatically created, the splat map, color map, and the heights as a 16 bit uh, binary data because currently there is no way for Godot to save a 16 bit texture as far as I know. So, um, so that's all the data needed by default. Sometimes there is a bit more. For example, if you want grass maps or other maps that have other purposes uh, in the future. Uh, and there is a possibility that in the future we can even stream the terrain so there would be chunks in folders and stuff. So, uh, And uh, yeah, it re-imports them if I focus out the editor. So now there is more stuff, the import folders, etc. So, um, we can also import terrains or generate them. Uh, just a quick look at generate. It's a simple generator I wrote uh, uh, with uh, shader code. Uh, it Currently, it only works if you already have a terrain uh, created. Uh, it doesn't create the terrain by itself currently, uh, especially because th there is no option here to set the resolution of it. Uh, that's not very good, but I will probably add it later. Um, so we can uh, choose a seed, randomize, um, choose uh, some octaves. It's barely nose, so it's pretty common. Uh, roughness, reduce a little bit the roughness, and increase the height range. Uh, and let's apply. And here we go, we have a generated terrain out of the box. So it's very, very simple. Uh, sometimes you might want something more uh, better, but um, either this one will improve over time or you can use an, an, a third party tool like World Machine or Scape. Uh, so these can export uh, 16 bits raw images and also PNGs, uh, and uh, you can also import them using the import maps. So the import maps menu, uh, it can expect a bunch of different things, uh, splat map, color maps, and height map. The most important one is the height map, because without height map, there is no terrain. So uh, I have already uh, a, few a few terrains uh, to show you, but just so you are aware, uh, currently only raw 16 bits and PNG are supported, especially just PNG 8 bit color depth because uh, Godot doesn't support 16 bit color depth in PNG. Uh, PNGs are fine unless you want to make a terrain with a lot of height differences uh, because 8 bits doesn't have much precision. I do have a, an 8-bit terrain, which looks okay. Uh, so I can show you height map two. And uh, if you're unsure about which uh, constraint this has, because it has to be square, by the way, uh, there is a check button here, which tells you anything that could potentially be wrong in the import. Uh, but it's the the import here will try to do its best to fit the texture into the constraints of the terrain system. So uh, let's just import that and boom. So it's very harsh. 
uh, but that's gonna happen from time to time because uh, it requires some calibration so uh, you can just re-import it so it, it's the same path so you can reduce the max height I know for the for 8 bits it's better to choose 100 so in the minimum height and max height and import it again and that's better lose a bit more the height we expect so uh, there is another way to uh, tweak the height which is uh, the map scale here so you can increase it if you want it's just a scale factor but uh, applied to the shader directly rather than uh, being a transform thing you can also scale in X and Z if you want it to be larger it's just a scale so keep in mind it will not increase the resolution you see there is a lot of polygons visible because it's very low resolution uh, so I can put it back to one um, so uh, I think that's all for the height map how do we texture this so by default uh, I provide a classic 4 shader which is basically a splat map RGB shader the one we see the most commonly in the height map so uh, I have the four elements here if you double click on them you can choose uh, textures for it so the main one we are interested in is albedo so uh, let's load one I have a few ones already in my project so uh, let's use this one so uh, by default the first texture will be splat splatted around all the terrain it's because by default the first channel of the splat map is set to one so uh, the first texture you set is going to cover everything by default uh, if you set another one I have for example bricks it won't cover it but you can paint it by using this paint tool at the top and boom you can paint whatever you want if you want to erase the what the, the, the bricks just select another slot and cover it back um, so uh, a word about this um, so as you can see there is albedo and normal so for the color and the normal maps but there is also alpha bump and alpha rothes why alpha it's because uh, a terrain shader is expensive it has this this one the classes the classic four one it has to sample four textures at once for every pixel and same for the normal map so that eight textures to sample only for the app for the visual of the of the ground so uh, instead of having for bump and roughness instead of having eight other textures to sample I just use the alpha channel of the regular albedo and normal textures so it makes the shader more efficient uh, and uh, but the downside is well downside it's um, that you have to pack yourself this into the alpha channel by default if you use a normal texture you find anywhere it's gonna be white by default uh, because uh, there is no transparency the terrain doesn't support transparency itself because it's not a uh, it's not a common use case um, so I just reused the channel for that so uh, this one is already packed it has uh, a texture I found on CC zero textures if you want to do that you can use an image editor or you can use a tool I made which is channel packer you can find it on the asset uh, lib uh, never mind the, the messy layout it's a code bug so with this tool you can uh, select a preset here which is RGB plus alpha you can take a first texture here so you take the albedo here and here you select the other one whatever uh, the one that you can that you want to put in alpha 
and then it will it's gonna output these into a single texture and that's very really handy and i made these textures using this tool uh, so uh, to show you uh, a little bit more if you go to ground one the normal i can select it here albedo no it's not this one oh god i named it wrongly <laughs> Uh, okay, so this one is the normal map and it has the roughness as well in it. So now we have a nice uh, effect on it, which changes depending on the light orientation. So, um, why is the last one named Cliff? So. There is uh, f four different slots or textures, but the last is called Cliff. It's because the, the shader I used, uh, I was wondering if I could have clip tree planner mapping for this, for example. Like if I selection here, I'll be able to take bricks again. Uh, and uh, let's paint it. And you can see it looks like shit because it's stretched, it's a height map. So. Uh, the idea is uh, I could use tree planner on it and uh, if I select this and check tree planner and boom looks a lot better uh, it's better on rocks necessarily because uh, here it's bricks so it's too regular so you can see the messiness of tree planner but it's it's good for natural things um, and I did it only on the last one, but that's mostly because I didn't want to repeat four times a different thing in the shader. And that's that's an if to write uh, as well. So I don't know if that's the best idea to do uh, because there is no if def uh, in Godot. <laughs> so anyway, you can change it if you want later on. I will show you why uh, you can change it. Um, so. What else about textures? I think that's all of it. Ah, no, there is a nice feature I made with this terrain system, uh, which is depth blending. This is uh, this parameter here. So if you set your brush opacity to something very low and paint uh, bricks, for example, you can see uh, that it paints very very nicely with nice edges and transitions uh, so you can see the grass going in between the bricks and that is all because of this the alpha bump the shader knows about the geometry of the things inside your texture so it can do some nice blending uh, if you turn it off it looks like that which is a bit more meh <laughs> so just alpha transition it's not very good uh, you you might want that if you want but uh, you can turn it off if needed i personally like it by default um i think that's all for textures um ah uh, yeah you can change the uv scale as well uh if you want the ground to tile a little bit more you can do this or do that changes the scale of the of the text the ground textures it's all shader parameters so it depends on the shader you choose um, so next thing is cutting holes how do you cut holes into a terrain like that because you want mo to make caves I guess at some point so um, let's say you want to make a cave here so uh, Boom, here we go, we have a cave. <laughs> no, well, the, the terrain doesn't support cave by itself because it's a height map, but if you, usually what you do in this case is that you make a, a mesh yourself in a, a 3D editor, which is the cave or the tunnel or whatever, and you put it on top of that hole, and, um, and that's how you do it. So, um, there is, however, a problem with this, but it's because of collision. Currently, it uses bullets 
a height field collision. So this is quite optimized for height, height maps compared to mesh colliders, but it doesn't support holes by default. So uh, you can make holes, but you cannot make them physical, and that's quite of a problem. Maybe there is a way by changing the, 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 the C++ code, uh, but I don't know yet how to do it. Uh, so, uh, you can cover back the holes by unchecking this and drawing on top of it. And the last feature uh, is grass. So you can add grass. Mainly the terrain is separated in two main areas, which is the ground and the details. So the details is everything that goes on top of the ground. And currently there is only grass so supported. So you can add or remove grass items. So let's add one. I have one already <laughs> in my project, which is a transparent texture. And uh, if you select it, you can now paint grass. And here we go. We have lots of grass. It uses hardware instancing under the hood, so that's very fast. And uh, it has a fall off. Like you can see, it disappears when you go far, but it does it very smoothly. Uh, the reason is you cannot draw at an inf infinite distance, obviously. Uh, you can erase grass by setting density to zero. You can make more or less grass blades. It's also texture based. So basically, when you paint grass, a new map is created. So let's save it first to make sure I can see it. And you see this, this additional texture was created for you. There is under, under the hood, the, the plugin does that automatically. It creates detail layer. So you can see we painted on this spot of the terrain and we can see this little spot here. It's a, it's a monochrome image. Uh, so it's just uh, where, there is, where there is grass and where there isn't. Uh, and you can add wind to it. So uh, I will zoom a little bit more. And uh, that's a setting you can find here. So it's very simplistic at the moment. Uh, it has to be improved over time. Uh, and there is also the fact that you can set only one kind of grass within y one layer. You can add another layer if you want, like uh, if I take uh, uh, grass which is made of the Godot icon. Well, it's not a Godot icon, but uh, you can paint it as well. So uh, boom, let's, let's, let's have different kind of grass, which is like photos or something. <laughs> uh, so you can have different kind of grass, uh, one on top of each other. Uh, let's see about level of detail. So uh, the terrain is able to handle level of detail. So as you, you see that as I move, the terrain decimates the vertices dynamically. So the closer I get, the more detail there is. And that's nice because it's, it spares a lot of drop holes and makes the terrain render faster. Uh, you can go very, very far away if you want, uh, and if you toggle uh, the wireframe, you will see the terrain is actually not that much vertices. And uh, if you go closer, you see it, it adds a load more of vertices. Uh, I don't know if you can see it with the OBS compression. <laughs> uh, so, normal. Uh, in order to, you can tweak this by uh, having uh, uh, shrink size and load scale. Uh, I usually set it to 32 here because it's less draw calls and better um, better look. Because uh, as you can see at the bottom, every quad is a different mesh uh, generated at runtime. Um, and uh, I usually leave lot scale to two, but you can increase it if you really want a lot more details. Just keep in mind that it, it will create more draw calls because it will split more chunks to have more detail. 
Um, what else about this? There is a synchronous loading, but I think I will remove it at some point because in the future you will be able to load this resource yourself into a thread, so that won't be an issue anymore. Uh, there is a choice of shaders. Uh, in the future there will be uh, a, a very nice one that will come in uh, 3.1, but currently it's only the classic 4 one with splat maps, which you can change to light. Uh, I think there is a bug currently because the light one is currently changing <laughs> the lights <laughs> on the terrain, like it's it's it looks... I don't know why it does that, but that's I think that's a bug. Uh, because basically the Classic 4 light is the same it is the same shader as Classic 4, except it has less textures. And the reason is a few people told me that they could not see the terrain. Uh, and I think that's because of uh, hardware limitations or something. Hopefully, uh, if you have uh, an old GPU or something, you can probably just use this. And the last part is, if you set it to custom, uh, obviously it shows nothing because there is no custom shader defined, so I will go back to Classic 4. And if you, if you select new shader while having sh Classic 4 selected, you will be able to fork the shader and customize it the way you want. So if I create a shader here and set it to custom, it's still there. But if you click on the shader, you can edit and see everything the shader does. So, for example, here, if I want to, uh, if I want the first the first channel to be completely red, I can do that zero zero, and that should be all red, all red except the bricks, <laughs> as you can see here. Yeah, so uh, you can modify everything you want here. And put it back to what it was, uh, and then I save. Uh, so yeah, that's it. I think I hope I didn't uh, miss anything. But uh, I will probably in the future make another video that covers more. A more updated version because this is this one is 0 0.8 as you see you can see the version here 0 0.8 uh, and it's still kind of a beta because there is probably some bugs left and uh, features I want to implement that are not here and make it awkward to use as you saw at the beginning of the video so yeah, most of the not most of the features are there anyway. So, uh, for example, if you I think you can play. Oh wait, no, not that, not that. Uh, there is a demo I made. Boom, which is basically the same terrain because I imported it anyway. I imported the same image, uh, but you can see it works. Uh, like I made a prototype in which I can fly around and throw some cubes, they collide, they collide with the terrain and it has nice reflections and all. So yeah, it's usable, so um, I will keep improving it over time uh, as I have free time as well because I have other projects. Um, but I think that's it for this video. So. Let me know if you have any other question about it, or if you have any problems. Uh, hope I see you next time for our next video, and uh, see you again.